everybody it's zeth here i have a uh, deck that i just drafted as you can tell these are actually different colors than the last few videos i've uh posted this is actually blue black um which is one of my f in draft it's a good color combination it's one of my favorites um while drafting in this set um i don't think blue black is as strong um in this set as in as it was in like some other sets here recently um but i'll go over each card and since it's a different deck um, i'll actually go over what each card does as well really quick um so i actually have two of the research assistants um how it works is that uh you pay one in the blue for one three um and when you tap it and pay three in the blue uh, you draw a card and discard a card so it's kind of like a looter and then I have a rare here, which is a chief engineer. And the artifact spells you have have Kavok. Um, I didn't only have literally one artifact in the deck, but the reason why I had it because it had um, it clocks up the ground with three toughness. Uh, so it's kind of a theme here with these cards. And then I have another research assistant. And then a Welkin turn. And Welkin turn um, can only be blocked um, by creatures with flying. Um, he can only he can only block creatures with flying. Um, so he's kind of like a Vaporkin from the last uh, block here. Then I have from a three drops, I have quite a few. I have a Witcher's Familiar, um, which is just a two, three, um, one black and two colorless. It's just a frog, nothing special about this guy. Get out of here, frog. Um, then I have a Jorubai Merc Lurker. Um, it gets plus one, plus one if I have a swamp in play. And I pay one and a swamp and target creature gets lifelink till in a turn this guy's awesome um the thing with this particular card is that unlike um obviously you can target any creature so um with some of the other cards i had um is actually a good life gaining tool unless they kill it which happened a few times too uh, then i have a frost links so when there's the battlefield uh, you tap a target creature upon the controls and um, it doesn't untap um during the next untap step um, it's a good card. I only saw one um, during the draft portion, so that's why I have one in deck. Uh, then I have a carry on crew, a zombie bird, um, and it enters the battlefield tap. It's two black and a, um, one black and a colorless. Um, it's a 2-2. Two -two. It enters the battlefield tap like a lot of the zombies in recent sets. Um, but this guy is a pretty decent flyer. I just hate the fact that he comes in tap, but hey, whatever. Uh, then I have Illusionary Angel. Illusionary Angel is um, one of the blue. Um, it actually is a 4-4 four, four flyer. Um, the only stipulation with this particular card is that you have to cast a spell before playing it. So, uh, And then I have a Coral Barrier. Um, I actually saw quite a few of these go around in my draft table. Um, it has Defender. It's a uh, two and a blue and it's a one and three defender and when it comes to on the battlefield you get this blue a blue squid creature token will island walk on the battlefield uh, there's just quite a few of these going around in my draft table um so there was i think one other blue black person a blue black uh, player at the table so i think they might just grab a bunch of these so luckily i didn't play against that opponent because he probably would have just sided in all these and just swung out then from a four drops, only have a few. I have a Zoff Shade. Um, Zoff Shade is three colorless in the black. It's a two two, and it has ability when you play two in the black, it gets plus two plus two attack on the turn. Pretty cool. Then I have the Anthem Path Mage. It's a Salamander Wizard. Uh, he's three in the blue, and he's a three two, and it has ability when you tap two in the blue, card creature can't be blocked this turn. So it's pretty awesome as well. They have the Paragon of Gathering Mist, which is the blue Paragon. It gives all other blue creatures plus two, plus, I'm sorry, plus one, plus one. And then when you tap it and pay a blue, target creature is flying. Um, so I have quite a few um, creatures um, early game. Uh, well, not so much early, but this is a really good creature um, to target because it has uh, three, tough th three power and get through. Then from a five drop, I only got one. is a Nimbus of the Isles. Um, as a flying uh, four and a color and a four colorless and a blue three three flyer nothing special, um, and then I have another uncommon. It's a cap 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 show kite fins. Um, whenever you play it or another creature in the battlefield, you tap a target creature upon the controls. Um, and then I have Solar Ravnica, which is my first pack, first pick. And um, this guy is a 6-6 six, six flyer for two blue and a four colorless. Um, when you pay five and two blue, you draw a card for each color permanent to your control. And then when you, when it's, you exile it, if it's in the graveyard, 
um, then you do the same thing. So basically with this deck, this is two colors, more than likely you're going to draw two cards. Thing is, I didn't actually draw any cards um, with the soul out uh, at any point tonight. So um, it's still a good solid color. I mean, solid card is just didn't draw any cards and it was going to draw mostly two cards at most um and there you go so it's pretty good and i'll go over my non-creature spells i played uh so i have a soul snare a void snare this is sorcery and bounce target non-land permanent to his owner's hand i have an internal thirst which uh a chain creature gets life link and whenever a creature opponent controls dies uh then you get a plus one plus one counter on the creature I uh, have a Necrobite. Um, it gains Death Touch on turn generated. generate it. You've seen this card in the last set. Then uh, Void Into the Void uh, returns two target creatures to their owner's hands as a sorcery. Uh, flesh, in, flesh to Dust is an instant speed removal spell. Distorted target creature can't be regenerated. I uh, play the Meteorite. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it does two damage to target creature or player, and you can tap it and you add a color, any color to the pool. And then I have a Jace's Ingenuity, you draw three cards. And then the common in the blood, which has Convoke, so you can tap it on Hell Pay with Cost, and it does four damage to target creature or player, and you gain four life. Uh, so the matches tonight were pretty good. Um, my first player was green, um, green, red. Um, beat him, I think he was new, so I didn't really want to beat him too badly, but I mean, he was new, had to play those artifacts that gain the life when you cast a certain color and play a certain land. Um, then my second round opponent, who I lost, my first loss went to, uh, he had, um, I think he had... I don't remember. It's so late. I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. I don't remember what he played, but I lost. No, he was playing blue. He was playing green black, and he had the Colonian Twin Grove, and he actually had the token, just like the one I had last week. And um, he had like a lot of graveyard shenanigans, and he actually ended up milling his Colonian Twin Grove twice um, during the match. So it was pretty awesome, man. Um, and he, I actually um, helped him mill because I did um, cast. Um, the other card, like Mind Sculpt, which was a cyborg card I cited in as well. Um, and then round three uh, was a blue white opponent. He had. It, was, it didn't get crazy with like the blue white tokens, but he had like um, two and soul snares and a couple of artifacts, so he started swinging with those. Um, game one, um, he actually had turn two, turn one, Ornithopter, turn two, um, art of. Um, <laughs> Turn one or Orthopter. Orthopter play the land, turn two, and soul sun soul artifact on the Orthopter, and then started swinging for five. That sucked. Um, so I actually took five damage. He was probably able to stabilize in one. Um, and then game two, he actually milled me for 14 because he had two mind sculpts, and I was still able to win. It was really close though, but um, that was pretty cool. And then my fourth round opponent was green white. Um, he had a bunch of creatures out, and I couldn't really stabilize. And I was a mana screw um, game one, so that was kind of sucky. Um, he ended up going 2 0, so I lost. That was my second loss. And then my third round opponent. I'm sorry, fifth round opponent. I uh, was playing some kind of Jun, green, black. Um, he was playing green, black, red. Um, first game was really slow because I just cannot draw lands. I was kind of mana screwed. Um, and then he ended up playing the uh, red soul and um, started burning my face. And then uh, game two, um, he played the soul, but I actually decided in another card, which is Endless Obedience. Um, so I ended up killing the soul and actually stealing his soul and swinging with his soul. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then... Game three, um, he had that t t two drop um, haste. And you sacrifice it, the creature gets haste and you spend the mana on it. Um, but he didn't play the soul, so I thought he had the soul. Um, so I ended up stabilizing and just, uh, you know, one um, gaining life with the illusionary angel and the uh, lifelinker dude, this guy who gives lifelink to creatures. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I also cited in this card against people who played red, um, which is actually a really strong card um, because it can't attack unless there's a mountain on the battlefield. Um, it's Glacial Crasher. It play, it's two blue and four colorless. It's a 5-5 five, five trample dude. Um, so it's actually pretty awesome. I like this card a lot. Um, against red, it's a good sideboard card. Um, if you're blue red, I would probably play them in main deck, um, depending on what you have. But this cards are really good, so I sided in against. Um, I only had two opponents that were playing red, so sided in and stomped. So he's pretty awesome. 
Uh, other than that, um, as far as what people open, I know someone opened the Nissa. Um, a few of the um, someone opened. I know two people who opened up at Colonia Twin Grove. I know I played against one guy. Um, who did it? No, actually, I played both of them. Um, the first round opponent had a Colonia Twin Grove. But I didn't see it in the match. Um, other than that, I think I got eight plays and I ended up making eight dollars, which is not bad. But you know, um, this is still kind of new and this is different colors, so. Uh, that's pretty much about it. It is like almost 1.30 in the morning. I'm dead tired and I'm going to go to sleep. Luckily, I have tomorrow off and I'll probably be drafting sometime on Friday. So that'll probably be when you'll see my next video. I haven't decided um, where I'm going to be, but more than likely it'll probably be Fog or Comic Town. I'll flip a coin or something to determine. Oh yeah, I'm playing at Fog tonight. Uh, Monday night, draft at Fog at Dusk. So. Um, James is here. I'm about to close up shop, waiting for me to get this video finished or whatever. So I'm gonna um, leave. Um, like the video. Um, you know, comment on the video, especially um, if you like what you see or you know thought there might have been some other cards or if there's any strategies that you found so far with playing with M15. Um, yeah, share those. You know, give people help. That's why I do these videos is to kind of give um, people some help on different builds and. And even though I don't win them all, um, it's still kind of fun to still learn to set and figure out new things. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's it. I'm going to sleep. Well, I have to drive home first and then I'm going to sleep. No, actually, my girlfriend got pizza. So I'm going to eat the pizza. Then I'm going to go to sleep. Um, so you guys have a good night and uh, see you on the next video.